Welcome to the Crow Enterprise Technical Community Hour. My name is Rich and I'll be your host for today's presentation. Today we'll be covering AI and ML for Chrome and Chrome OS. Today's Chrome Technical Community Hour is brought to you by the Chrome Enterprise Recommended Program, which is Google's partner program for third-party solutions that are optimized for Chrome OS or integrated with Chrome browser. This webinar brings you the opportunity to engage with our team about new Chrome features and updates, learn some enterprise development best practices, and also get some insight on our enterprise strategy. Now I'll hand it over to Demian, our speaker, and he'll go ahead and dive in today's topic. Demian? Thank you, Rich. Uh, I'm going to just present. Thank you for that. Uh, my name is Demian. I work for the Chrome and Chrome OS Enterprise team. And today we will explore AI ML for web applications. Uh, this session won't cover AI ML fundamentals. Uh, instead, we'll focus on interesting use cases, architectures, and practical applications within Chrome and Chrome OS. Uh, no prior AI knowledge is required. However, if you want to review some of the foundational concepts, including key terms and things like neural networks, you can check out this course by Jason Mays in YouTube. Let's start reviewing some core AI ML concepts for progressive web apps or web applications. Traditionally, AI ML features are integrated into web apps by exposing server-side endpoints, allowing the app to consume them via API calls, such as when the, with the Gemini API. While this architecture remains effective for a lot of use cases, it also comes with certain drawbacks. The first one is latency. Uh, each server call requires a network round trip, adding delays. While this may be acceptable in some cases, it can be a deal breaker for tasks like real-time video manipulation, where low latency is critical. The second one is cost. While the computational cost for an API call related to inference are obviously much lower than those for training the models, especially if we are talking about large language models, they can accumulate rapidly, particularly under high server loads. And finally, users may be hesitant to send their data to your backend due to privacy concerns or lack of trust. This often requires processing the data client-side without relying on server interactions. While server-side AI was historically the most powerful and in cases only way to run AI workloads, the tendency is moving into hybrid architectures that leverage powerful on-device models to balance the load, enabling certain tasks to be performed locally on the client while others are offloaded to the server. For the remainder of this session, we will focus primarily on what we call on-device AI as that is where our focus in uh, Chrome and Chrome OS is centered. However, this doesn't mean that server-side AI is any less important. It actually remains crucial for many use cases. The key as a developer is finding the right balance between client-side and server-side AI ML workloads when building a web app. One way to analyze on-device AI is by dividing the client stack into different levels, each having its own solutions. For web developers, it is particularly important to understand the first two levels. The first one is the web application layer, which encompasses custom models tied to a single origin, your web app. It also includes libraries like TensorFlow, which enable training models using existing data sets or custom data, and running them directly on the client side. Companies may choose to use their own models for greater control and to differentiate their solutions. However, this approach comes with drawbacks, such as increased model size and the need for dedicated teams to train and maintain them. While most web applications don't require custom models, an estimated 5 to 10% of developers in the community may benefit from them. One example is certain features in video calling apps, such as background blur, which must run client side to minimize, minimize latency and reduce costs. The AI models powering these features are typically custom built. The next one is the browser level. Running custom models and AI related code requires advanced browser capabilities or APIs. 
The first category of, of solutions includes technologies like WebAssembly, which enables native code to be compiled for the browser and executed with high CPU performance. And also there are APIs like WebGPU, which allow web applications to harness GPU acceleration. However, regardless of how much custom models are optimized, each web app must fetch its own model since it cannot be shared across origins. This significantly increases serving cost and can be resource intensive for users in terms of bandwidth and storage. On the other hand, developers have shared that they prefer to focus their efforts on building exceptional web applications rather than training the models. In other words, they prioritize feature development over fine tuning models to fit their specific use cases. For that reason, Chrome is introducing the ability to fetch a single model that we call Gemini Nano that can be shared across origins and provides various functionalities through dedicated APIs. This appro approach allows multiple PWAs to share the same model, eliminating the need for each to fetch and build their own. The group of APIs exposed by the browser that use Gemini Nano is called built-in AI APIs. Let's review the available options we currently have. The first group of Gemini-powered APIs that we launched are related to text your use cases. This includes text classification, translation, language detection, and summarization. Uh, these are all tasks that involve understanding and transforming text in various ways. The prompt API is very similar to the chat experience that you have when you go to the Gemini web app, but it's integrated into your own application and runs on device. Uh, this API is currently available in an origin trial for Chrome extensions. Summarization allows you to create summaries of text on your pages. Uh, this could be applied, for example, to create summaries of product reviews in product listing pages. This API is also in origin trial, both for PWAs and for extensions. And finally, there is Translator, which does exactly what the name suggests, translates. It's also available as an origin trial for PWAs and extensions. You can check out this link for more information on the status of each available API and instructions on how to apply for their origin trials. Or you can also go to the main site of Building AI for Chrome at developers.chrome.com. Drilling down further, we reach the OS level, which is crucial as Gemini needs to be integrated with the operating system through OS level APIs that Chrome can access. Gemini Nano is available in Chrome in most operating systems, with Chrome OS support coming soon. And finally, we have the hardware level. This is also very important since not all of our Chrome, Chrome OS devices will support on-device ML due to the hardware requirements like CPUs, GPUs, and memory. It's important to know that the models can run on different types of chips. Uh, GPUs, which are the most powerful, but also the most resource intensive. CPUs, which are also used for some AI workloads. And NPUs, designed specifically for this type of operations. NPUs consume less battery and enable more sustainable workloads. When it comes to our own devices, Chromebook Plus models will be the first to support the latest AI models and Gemini integrations. However, if you are working with, for example, lower end devices that don't meet the requirements, be sure to explore alternative options as well. For example, we mentioned at the beginning TensorFlow uh, as a library that you can use to train uh, your own models. Uh, TensorFlow offers a large catalog of pre-trained models developed by both the TensorFlow team and the community. Some of these models are smaller and optimized for specific tasks, making them suitable for lower end hardware. And that's a wrap. Let's go over the main concepts we learned today. Today, we discussed the distinction between server and client side AI ML for the web. While AI APIs have traditionally been consumed from server endpoints, there's a growing trend toward running mo models on the client. As a result, we expect hybrid architectures to become the new standard. 
Running AI models on the client offers several advantages, including zero latency, improved privacy by keeping data local, reduced inference cost, and the ability to operate offline. However, there are also some drawbacks. Performance depends heavily on the device, models need to be smaller, and custom models may require large downloads. So, finding the right balance between client and server-side workloads is key. Many companies use their own models, allowing them to train on proprietary data and avoid dependence on third parties. However, each model is bound to a specific origin and can be shared across domains, which can lead to inefficiency. Additional maintaining these models require dedicated AI teams for training and upkeep. For this reason, Chrome is introducing the ability to fetch a single model, Gemini Nano, that can be shared across origins and provides various functionalities through dedicated APIs. This approach allows multiple PWAs to use the same model, eliminating the need for each to build their own and integrate with their apps. The group of APIs that Chrome exposes that use Gemini are called built-in AI APIs. You can find more information on those APIs on developer.chrome.com. And that's pretty much it. Preach, going back to you. Thank you, Damien. In closing, please visit our website, chromeos.dev, for additional articles and more information to supplement your learning. This concludes today's presentation. We look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you soon.